So welcome to today's Creditor Watch webinar titled Getting the Most Out of Creditor Watch. My name is Patrick Coughlin. Uh, I'm the presenter today and I'm also the commercial director at Creditor Watch. Um, I wear a few hats mainly around sales and marketing and also product development. Um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, reach out if you've got any questions. So before we get started, uh, just a couple of things to, to mention. Um, from a question and answer point of view, we have got some staff standing by at the moment. Um, so if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask as we go, they'll, um, they'll be able to answer most of those questions provided they're not too many. And um, if it, look, if it requires a phone conversation, then they'll, uh, they'll get in contact with you as well to help answer any uh, more technical questions that you might have. So that question box is in that GoToWebinar um, toolbar that you should see there that's generally hovering around. Um, the slides and the webinar recording itself will also be sent out to you by email in the next 48 hours. So you'll have a, a copy of those for future reference or if you have to duck off early for whatever reason, um, that way at least you know that you can always catch up or, or take off from where, from where you left off. And what I like to do is, is start with a, a quick poll to get everyone engaged as soon as possible. So let me just jump in and run that one. So what I'm asking today or now is, which Creditor Watch features do you use? So you can select more than one there. We've got the main features up. There's a few more on top of that, but if you just um, select those that are relevant to you, so credit reports, credit checks, you might also know them as monitoring and alerts. So you've got your customers loaded into your Creditor Watch account, for instance, and you're receiving alerts on them when changes occur. The debt collection tools, such as the membership logo um, and the letter of demand template. If you're not using any, then select none. And um, if you're not a Creditor Watch customer, let us know that you're not a Creditor Watch customer. I'll give it another few seconds for everyone to get their votes in, then we'll sort of have a look at the, um, the results and that gives me a better understanding of, you know, exactly how it, is everyone using it. Um, and I might tailor my presentation slightly differently as a result. So I'll close the poll down now. So what we can see here, 73% are using credit reports. So that's great. Hopefully you're using them um, when you get a new customer that comes to you. So from an upfront point of view, you run a credit check on them to make sure one, you're verifying who they are and you know, do they have any negative information on their credit report. Monitoring and alerts, that's fantastic, 89%. That's definitely our most powerful tool. Debt collection tools, 25%. 4% um, of you, only a small amount using none and not a Credit Watch customer, that's great. Everyone's a Credit Watch customer and that's really who we targeted the webinar at today. So let's keep going. So what are we gonna to cover today? We're gonna to briefly touch on who Creditor Watch is, given you know, the vast majority of you are customers, that'll be very brief. Um, we'll look at some market insights as well from our small business risk review and also some other bits of uh, statistics that we pull out every now and again um, for webinars and the like. We'll run another poll um, that's actually going to take place later on in the, in the presentation. We'll also look at a live demonstration. So what I want to do is really demo the main tools and features that a Creditor Watch account provides to you. So how to run a credit report and what you should be looking at. Um, monitoring your customers and receiving alerts. So what that looks like in case you're not doing it at the moment or if you're not aware that you can click through from an email alert, for instance. Utilizing the debt collection tools. So there's a lot more than just the uh, membership logo and the letter of demand. We'll um, look at the registration of a default, a really powerful debt collection tool that um, you should all be using. If you don't have any defaults to register, that's a good thing. And finally, we'll look at the high risk list, which is going to identify all the current customers that you're dealing with that have some sort of you know, credit risk indicator on their credit report at the moment. I'll do a, a quick recap. Um, one last poll, which leads into um, a future webinar that I'm running in a couple of weeks. And um, as always, please do ask questions along the way, as we'll be able to answer those um, with our staff that are standing by. 
So a little bit about Creditor Watch. As most of you know, we're Australia's leading commercial credit reporting bureau with over 40,000 customers. We've got a wide variety of products and features, including obviously the reports, monitoring and debt collection tools that you get with your Creditor Watch um, subscription account. We also have online credit applications that we build for our customers um, and auto decisioning tools. And they can be sort of turned around generally in 48 hours if they're on the simpler side and you know a couple of weeks if you want to get a lot more complicated with it. We'll provide data washing and data fulfillment too. So that's really good for cleaning up your database um, and or appending a credit score, for instance, to all of your customers. It's uh, really ideal for um, annual reviews as well. So it's always a good, good opportunity to, to sort of pick a date every year where you go, I'm going to have a look at my whole database and identify any really at-risk customers that we potentially shouldn't be dealing with. Um, and if you're a small business owner or manager out there, um, Credit Watch really can operate as an accounts receivable manager, a virtual accounts receivable manager, I should say. So it's really out there to help those who, who might not have a dedicated AR manager or credit team, for instance. So some market insights that we're seeing. Um, so Credit Watch releases a quarterly report. Most of you, or all of you should have received, um, will be receiving that. You'll be on the, the email list. It's called the Small Business Risk Review, and it looks generally at um, the quarter versus the quarter the year before. We pull data internally, so defaults that are registered by our customers and also trade payment information. And we also look at external data, such as wind-ups, administrations, court actions, you know, data that we're pulling from the courts, ATO and ASIC, that sort of thing. So a few, um, a few insights that we're seeing over the last few months and from that last risk review, 67% increase in the number of Credit Watch defaults registered between um, when we compare Q4 2016 to Q4 2015. The average value of a default has risen significantly, 76% in the past 12 months. So defaults are definitely worth a lot more. Um, we're seeing that when a creditor watch default is registered against an entity, against a debtor, they have a 46% 46 chance of failing within the next 12 months, which is a huge statistic. So if you are monitoring your customers and they receive a default, you really do want to keep a close eye on them. You also really want to main, uh, maintain you know, communication with them and ensure their, their credit limit is uh, you know, within, a, within a manageable range. Um, for those in WA or operating uh, businesses in WA or dealing with um, debtors in WA, there's been a 113% increase in the number of court actions over there versus Q4 2015. Um, and the, the one stat that is a constant and, and rarely changes, and, and it's something we always like to, to keep um, front of mind, is the fact that a director with a previously failed company is two and a half times more likely to fail again. So when you do look at a credit report, um, if there are cross directorships in there, you should be keeping a close eye on that and considering that when you're opening an account for someone. I've put in a link here, download risk review. That's going to take you through to our risk review PDF. Um, so you can have a little closer look through that. Maybe print it off and save it just as a reminder. On to the next one. So data sources, just, um, just to let you know exactly where our data is coming from. The main ones here, obviously, ASIC, the Australian Business Register, which some people know as ABR or ABN Lookup. Courts from around Australia provide summons, writs, and judgments. There's uh, another ASIC register that they run called insolvency notices, and we pull uh, data from them, and that's anything to do with an administration, liquidation, or winding up. So if a company goes into winding uh, into administration, you can actually see who the administrator is with their contact details, which is very handy because administrators can be a little bit slow in um, sometimes identifying and alerting um, creditors out there. We've got over 100 debt collectors that are using us for um, their own searching needs and they register mercantile inquiries or mercantile footprints against debtors that they're chasing for overdue debts. And of course, our huge customer database registers payment defaults and trade payment data. So those little asterisks there for the last three, all that data is actually unique to Creditor Watch. 
All right, so let's get into the, the live demonstration. I'm going to show obviously the most important and popular features being credit reports, monitoring and alerts, debt collection tools, and the high risk list, of course. I'll, uh, I'll show you how to register a default too. Um, keeping in mind that all of these things are included in your monthly subscription. Um, the only thing that may or may not be will be the lo things like a, a credit score or a payment predictor. Um, depending on the size or, or the setup of your subscription with Creditor Watch. So let's jump in and have a look. So as all of you know, well, most of you should know, this is your, your dashboard and your dashboard is really um, your homepage when it comes to Creditor Watch. This is where you want to come to whenever you want to start a new search potentially, um, you want to get an overview of you know, how many customers you're monitoring, how much space you have in your watch list, that sort of thing. Um, you've got all the action bars here to run a credit check on a company, directors, add more customers to your watch list, access the debt collection tools, um, and we've also got you know, some more recent ones, video tutorials. New Zealand reports as well are now available. Looking at statistics, so this obviously shows you how much of your watch list you're using. This entities with adverse refers to your high risk list and that's basically showing me that 27% of the customers that I'm monitoring have adverse data or risk factors against them. On the right here, again, this changes from time to time depending on your account plan with us, but I have integrated my demo, in this case, zero account. So it's gonna pull through my receivables to show me you know, what my total receivables are, total overdue, max outstandings, that sort of thing. So. It's a really good um, little tool here. If you do have zero or you have um, one of the live MYOB accounts, Account Rights Live or Essentials Live, you can integrate with Creditor Watch and that just further automates um, your credit reporting and monitoring a little bit more. The last bit on the dashboard, you'll see your recent alerts. So. If you're monitoring customers, you receive email alerts, but you also receive notifications within this section. So if for some reason your emails are down, you'll still be able to log in and have a look at the alerts that are coming through within Creditor Watch. Scrolling back up, we've got your watch list, which is all the customers that you're monitoring. If you've purchased any credit scores, they'll show up in the credit score column. Your high risk list, which I will touch on in a bit more detail later on. Recent lookups that you've performed, any defaults that you may have registered. So you can update those to settled, for instance, when uh, someone has paid it. And the final one, credit scores that you have purchased um, and also credit scores that you purchased in the past that are no longer obviously active. So when you do purchase a credit score, um, it becomes, it stays live for you to access for three months and that credit score is dynamic within that time period. So let's run a credit check. So you can obviously use the search bar here. You've got perform a credit check action tile, or you can come to the drop down and put in a term as well. So the one we're going to look at now is one that I use quite a bit, Denim Construction. So you can use an ABN, ACN business name. Um, credit checks are included in that monthly subscription. So, so don't be shy about running them. Um, it, it really is an important part of the credit management process to ensure that you're running credit checks, not only on customers that are coming to you for an account, but also, you know, when a, um, a, an alert is received, you wanna, you wanna check their, uh, their credit report or potentially do an annual review on your customers as well. So what we have here is denim construction. So as most of you should be aware, you would have received an email recently. You've potentially also seen a little pop-up from our uh, live chat that we now have. We've redesigned reconfigured our credit reports. So much cleaner now, much easier to find the information, well, not much easier, it was always easy, but a little bit easier to find the information and, and that key information does stick out. We've also uh, redesigned the credit score and payment predictor too, for those of you who do use those two scores. First things first, in this case, we can see the score here is Critical, it's got a score of one out of 850. We can see that there's 118 credit inquiries. The company is in external administration, seven payment defaults, 
14 court actions, an insolvency notice, two mercantile inquiries, 19 critical ASIC documents, and 19 cross-directorships. So straight away, just from this view, we can see we don't want to be doing business with this, with this particular company. If they're coming to you for an account, you want to say, no, it's cash up front, COD, um, or if they are a customer of yours, hopefully you've been monitoring and you've received email alerts for all of these changes and you have uh, closed their account, put them on stop and collected all your outstanding debt, hopefully. Um, so you can still click from a tile straight to that position. So that's still there. We've just removed the little plus sign that used to be there. And what you see these last three here, uh, they're referencing my zero integration. So I've got one invoice outstanding at the moment. It's overdue, it's value of $2,000. Um, for those of you with no zero or MIB integration, those tiles obviously won't sit there. Our big red risk box still appears, so it's telling you exactly what um, has been registered against them. And again, really quick clicks will take you straight through to that particular section within the credit report. ABR and ASIC data remain, so we haven't removed any data. We've actually added a few um, new bits of information in there as well. So the types of things like ABN last updated and registration review dates. Um, so you can see there the two entity types based on the ACN and the ABN. Um, we're starting to introduce industry data as well. So based on SIC and ANSIC codes, so you'll be able to see what industry certain companies um, come from. The credit score has had a big redesign. So you can see here, for those of you who do use credit scores or for those of you who don't, um, credit scores are really good ways of making consistent credit decisions when you're uh, bringing on new customers. So you, you could give you, yourself a, a number, say 500, anything below 500, I don't want to deal with. Um, we obviously provide a number of um, insights around a credit score. So in this case, they're one out of 850. The risk level is critical. Um, you can see that they're well below the, the average uh, for that entity type. The credit score advice is, um, you know, critical status, significant adverse information, present trading eligibility must be considered. So they've got a 71% chance of failure in the next 12 months. Realistically, that's at the bottom of that range. They're already in administration, well into administration. So they, um, they likely won't be trading out of that anytime soon. Um, from a 12-month historical view, we can see that they've been in that position for 11 months now. Um, if we had gone back, you know, 24 months, you would be able to see a nice trend as all of those payment defaults and court actions were lodged against the credit report, against the, the company, uh, the, the historical trend would have been definitely downwards. Payment predictor, now we don't provide a payment prediction on a company in external administration for obvious reasons. But I do have one here that we can have a quick look at. Again, you can see when to expect uh, payment, in this case, between one and 15 days. Um, at this point, it's at an average of five days as the most recent count. So you can see here, 12 month historical trend again, fairly consistent, bit of a jump in, in January, which is probably not much of a surprise because everyone is a little bit slower in paying their bills um, at that time of year. Um, and they seem to have got it back under control. St some statistics that we provide with that particular payment predictor as well is some average balance and overdue figures, um, highest credit exposures across single suppliers and combined suppliers, and the highest credit exposure overdue. So some chunky numbers there. Um, we can also see that it's coming from 18 different uh, trade lines. Moving on to the next section, we've got our risk information. So this is really gonna tell us exactly who has lodged court actions and payment defaults against this particular entity. So we can see in terms of court actions, there's 14 of them. The important information to look for is when the action took place. So we can see um, back in August, 2016, um, who the plaintiff was. So in this case, it is Epping Dundas uh, Investments Proprietary Limited, and the amount was for just over $4,000. So if we scroll down, we can see that there are plenty of them across a wide variety of customers as well. 
sorry, across a wide variety of creditors. Payment defaults, so these are registered by our customers, Credit Watch customers. Again, you can see when the um, payment default was added, when the invoice was actually due. So some people register defaults at 60 days overdue, other people it takes them 12 months before they register a default. So it's really, it's really good information to, to better understand when the invoice was due itself, who it was submitted by, the amount, and also the status. So you can see that current means it's currently outstanding, part paid um, means they're either on a, you know, a payment plan or, or they've you know, paid half of it already. Um, and then the other status you would have is settled, indicating that um, the, the default has been, or the outstanding amount has actually been paid. You'll see these little like buttons here. If you do receive an email alert and it was really beneficial, click on that. It just lets the, uh, the Credit Watch customer know, hey, thanks very much for that, that default. And hopefully that encourages them and yourself to register defaults. It's really important um, to register defaults, not just for your own for your own benefits in terms of leveraging the default or threat of a default to get paid, but also the more the defaults that get registered, uh, the more everyone gets out of Creditor Watch and the, and the more likely they are to register defaults in the future as well, which can only benefit everyone that uses it. Insolvency notice, so we can see in this case, um, this relates to a winding up notification uh, back in June 2016. Uh, we can see who the best contact is. That's generally the um, petitioning creditors uh, legal representative. So you've got their contact details. You can see when the hearing in this case took place um, and also the plaintiff's details here. If it was a um, administration appointment, administrator appointment, um, we'd actually provide the administrator's contact details as well as when the, the first meeting, for instance, was taking place. Um, and when your proof of debt and proxies are due and how to deliver them. Again, keeping in mind that for all of these um, bits of information, this, this, this data that's coming through, if you're monitoring this particular company, you'd actually receive email alerts on them. So Mercantile Footprints, you can see that this particular debt collection agency has or well, was after them twice in, uh, in 2015. Um, so this is a really good bit of data that comes through. If you would imagine, I'm a, I'm a creditor, someone owes me money, I would register a default against them, I would then probably pass it on to a debt collector, so hopefully they're using Creditor Watch and a mercantile footprint is lodged. If they can't collect it, um, a court action would be the next course of action, and then most likely a winding up or administrator appointment. So that's the sort of order that you should expect to see um, adverse come through. Not always the case, but that's kind of the ideal world. Critical ASIC documents. So these are all documents lodged with ASIC on or on behalf of the company relating to things like winding up, administration, liquidation, scheme of arrangement, and that sort of thing. Typically, you wouldn't actually need to order or purchase any of these because the data is going to be available either in the insolvency notices or direct from the administrator themselves. But if you do have to get access to it, it is available for you. The next bit of information we have is obviously the company information direct from ASIC. So looking at the directors, um, one of the new things that you'll notice is we've put in this little LinkedIn profile button. Um, so if you click on that, it actually takes you through to LinkedIn and allows you to perform a search. Um, so in this case, there's a bunch of Stephen McGraths. Um, if there was only one, it would take you direct to that particular person's um, LinkedIn profile. It's another good way to do a little bit of due diligence on them. On top of that, we can obviously see when they were born, when they were uh, um, appointed as a director, where they were born and also their address. Have a look at map view. You can even toggle the little man over to have a look at street view as well. So just giving you a little bit of um, the ability to perform slightly more um, investigation into you know, where they either work or where they live. Um, you know, is it a big property? Is it a, an apartment, et cetera, et cetera? Just hopefully painting more of a picture prior to you providing them with um, a credit account, for instance. Cross directorships. So, as I mentioned before, cross directorships are really important to look at. So, imagine this particular credit file we were looking at 
was clean. There was no, you know, court judgments or payment defaults or anything like that. But then you notice that they had, you know, a number of cross directorships or adverse cross directorships. So as you can see here, this particular director has a number of current um, companies that he's a director of, of which plenty of them have either adverse, which is flagged with the triangle and exclamation mark. Um, so there's plenty of them here, or they're in external administration or strike off action. There's a number of former failed companies as well. So this is really a, um, a key piece of information to consider and um, is, is pushing that, obviously, the credit score down over time, but indicating that these guys are going to be a fairly big credit risk. Registered addresses, pretty straightforward. Their registered office and principal place of business. Um, shareholding details, this has had a little bit of a, an overhaul as well. You can see uh, the total amount paid in terms of ordinary shares and who the shareholder is. And then finally, a couple of more admin related things. So these are all the ASIC documents that have been lodged over time on the company. Um, we can see all the ASIC extracts. So that comes direct from ASIC showing the um, directors, shareholders, addresses, etc., that have been purchased over time by other Creditor Watch customers. So what you'll often see is um, all that shareholder director um, address information is pre-populated um, and it will have a date as to when that particular document or when that extract was, was uh, purchased. So you can see back in Feb 2017, um, information is all up to date. If it wasn't up to date, we would flag it with you to let you know which part of it is actually, um, you know, might have new information or, or does have new information. Um, or if a, an ASIC extract hadn't been purchased on them before, we'll also indicate that for you. But typically, you'll, you'll, you would have noticed that more often than not, an ASIC extract has been purchased on um, a company that you're viewing. So in this case, you can see there's been 98 of them over time. Um, you can actually look at them individually if you want, but all the information is available in that uh, credit report above. And what we also have is um, a bit of visualization around this particular entity as well. So you can start to see exactly who's involved in the business in terms of directors, addresses, etc. So I guess one of the key things to look at is the fact that the company address and the director's address, he's obviously using his company address, which is a bit of a no-no with ASIC. Uh, it's also a good way to see, um, you know, family members that are involved, are they living at the same place, that sort of thing. So jumping back up to the top, you can see here that I have monitoring active. So if I click on there, it removes it from monitoring. Um, if I wanted to monitor this particular entity, I would click on there and it would add it to the monitoring list for me as well. While we're in here, let's look at registering a default. So you would click on register a default button and there's got the instructions here. So one of the things to note is the default must be more than $150 and more than 60 days overdue before you can register it. Payment due date has to be put in the amount that um, is outstanding, indicate whether it's been disputed, indicate whether part payment has been received. Now the last bit here really depends on, again, the type of Creditor Watch account you have with us. Um, some of you will have to upload a proof of debt document so that would be an invoice statement, um, letter of demand, or a, a court document, for instance. Um, that doesn't get shown to anyone, but we use that uh, for data quality inspection purposes to ensure that you know no malicious information is being registered, um, meaning you can you know rely on uh, the authenticity of defaults that you might receive on customers of yours in the future. Um, some of you won't have to actually lodge a default, uh, sorry, won't have to lodge a proof of debt document. Um, so it will look very similar, except for this obviously section here to attach the proof of debt. Click register a default. Once that default is registered, we will send an email alert to every other Creditor Watch customer that is monitoring that particular company. And going forward, if anyone does a, uh, a credit check, access a credit report on that company, they'll be able to see the default as well. All right, so jumping back to the dashboard, 
From a monitoring and alerts point of view, I touched on this briefly, you obviously see the recent alerts come through on your dashboard. However, you will also receive an email alert. So in this case, I've received an email alert um, with a number of changes. So you'll only ever receive one email a day for risk alerts. And you can see there's a summary of changes that have occurred, generally in order from riskiest change to least risky. In this case, we can see two ASIC insolvency notices, um, a commercial payment default, and also a court judgment as well. So if you were to click view, this is what you should be doing when you receive one of these email alerts. It will take you through to that particular company and you'll be able to go, okay, let's have a look at the information that has been lodged here. So I can see that they have um, two payment defaults in this case. And also have a little look around to get a bit more of an understanding of what's happening with this particular company. Similarly, if I click on the insolvency notices section, it takes me through to that particular company and I can start to consume all the information that's been lodged against that particular entity. So these were the insolvency notices about an administrator. You can see Rogers Reedy is the administrator that's been appointed, uh, or the firm I should say, Dean Campbell from Rogers Reedy. Click on the view notice and I can see exactly when the appointment is taking place, when the appointment has taken place and a little bit more information on the company itself. So fairly straightforward when it comes to email alerts. You set them up, we'll push you the information via email and also on your dashboard. Let's have a look at the debt collection tools. So you'll see there's a debt collection tools link there. A number of debt collection tools that we can access or that you can access we recently updated our um, best practices guide for dealing with debtors. So it's a little bit cleaner, a little bit more in-depth information now. So you can see, this is something that I would suggest, <clears throat> excuse me, that I would suggest you print out and keep on, um, you know, on your desk for when you're doing your accounts or give it to your credit team, for instance. Fairly basic information, but really the key is to be consistent in what you're doing. Um, have scheduled reminders, follow-ups, follow the same procedures over and over um, from you know, your upfront credit reports, monitoring ongoing customers and regular debt collection reminders to customers that owe you money. And ultimately the last one, report bad debtors. So register a default against them because that is really a powerful um, debt collection tool that you should be leveraging as a Creditor Watch customer. The other ones available here, Credit Watch membership logo, so you can attach that to your um, your invoices, statements, final notices, email signatures. Um, some people put it on their website as well. Um, it's a really powerful tool. It's a gentle tool as well. People will see it on your invoice and more often than not, your invoice gets put to the top of the pile uh, of all the invoices they have to pay. So you, have, you will get paid um, a lot sooner than those not using that logo. Um, we have a reminder notice template, so it's a, a more, I guess, softly, softly approach to when someone is overdue. Um, hey guys, you know, please use this um, prior to using the next one here, which is the final notice template, which is a firmer, you know, letter of demand. So if we download that, have a look at it quickly, see what you have to do is, just let my Microsoft Word open have to add your company logo and then obviously fill in all the red spaces. The key bit there though is this bolded middle paragraph explaining that you will be listing a or registering a default against them with Creditor Watch. Um, this may affect their ability to get credit in the future from suppliers. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really, really powerful template to use. More often than not, you will get um, contact back from the debtor explaining whether they can actually pay you or can't. But hopefully they make contact. You can put them on a you know a payment schedule. Um, it's uh, it's amazing how much positive feedback and testimonials we get from our customer base saying you know I've been chasing this this overdue invoice for for months and months and months. Signed up to Creditor Watch. Use the final demand notice. And what do you know? You get paid within you know a couple of days. So. If you're not using it at the moment, I suggest you at least give it a try. Um, you can obviously uh, you know, edit all of this uh, uh, copy that's in here 
um, so you can tailor it more specific to you know your needs um, put in your your payment details EFT um, BPay that sort of thing if necessary as well there's a how to register a default it's a video tutorial so it's a YouTube video and it only goes for a couple of minutes if you need that sort of help and there's some guidelines around uh, registering a default as well again they're very straightforward um, registering a default needs to be over $150 and uh, more than 60 days overdue. So the last thing we'll look at is the high risk list, which I touched on. Very straightforward. It is a list of all of your customers or all of the companies that you're monitoring within your Credit Watch account that have some form of risk factor lodged against them. So we can see advanced aircon, there's an insolvency notice, a mercantile footprint. Um, and also a court action. The you run down here, you can see um, entity status is cancelled, a default, Denim Constructions we obviously looked at earlier. So it's a really good way of either cleaning up your database and getting you know getting rid of customers that you, you're potentially no longer dealing with and, and therefore probably shouldn't be on your database and or um, finding out about customers that you thought, hey, they've been paying me fine, everything looks good, but in fact, you know, they might be struggling to pay other potentially less critical suppliers out there and it's only a matter of time before they struggle to pay you. So you really want to arm yourself with as much information and insights as possible and this high risk list is, uh, is one of those things that you should be using. So really quick recap here, credit reports, use them to verify customers, view risk indicators and access info on directors, monitoring and alerts. We send alerts for a wide variety of changes, including court actions, defaults, insolvency notices, debt collection actions, administrator appointments, ASIC changes, etc. Debt collection tools, um, I can't make guarantees obviously, but using the membership logo and those letter of demand templates, um, make a huge difference when you're, you know, you're performing your collections, particularly for those smaller businesses, medium businesses out there that don't have a dedicated credit team, don't have a, you know, a legal advisor that you can, you can lean on to write um, legal letters for you. These extra steps um, will really help, one, get paid faster, but two, avoid those bad debtors out there who, who sort of take advantage of, um, you know, smaller businesses, knowing that they don't, have a lot of leverage in order to get paid on time. And obviously that last one there, the high risk list, to identify current customers that pose an immediate risk to your business. Before we wrap up, I just wanna run one last poll. Um, this relates to a webinar we have coming up. So would you be interested in an online credit application? So an online credit application really helps with the onboarding of new customers. We can have really basic ones set up within 48 hours for you. And all we do is provide you with a link that you can give to customers or put on your website. They click on it, fill in your credit application online, and we automate all the credit checking, credit decisions, um, and workflow for you so that you, when you receive a credit application, know whether you should be either giving them um, a credit account, for instance, or moving them on to, to COD or rejecting them altogether. Um, so I'll be running a, a webinar in the next couple of weeks. I'll give you a link to that so you can have a look at that. So let's close the poll, show some results. So 78% of you, yes, you are interested. That's great. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll provide that link in just a second. 12% uh, of you not interested and 10% of you already have one. Hopefully, that is a Creditor Watch one. Um, our product's called Apply Easy. So that wraps us up. Um, thanks very much for your time, everyone. If that, that first little point there that I've got there is probably not relevant given that, you know, the overwhelming majority of you are um, Creditor Watch customers already. However, if you see there the upcoming webinars, um, click on that link. The next one, obviously, is that Streamlining Customer Acquisition. Uh, if you click on that, it will take you through to the webinars landing page. Uh, you'll see here uh, upcoming webinars. So click register now, exactly the same as what you've done for this particular webinar. If you've got a question, um, 
that didn't get answered or you didn't get to it or you just want to speak to someone at Creditor Watch, please email us, admin at creditorwatch.com.au or call us on 02-8188-2025. Um, a couple of questions that I'll address. I know we're probably running out of time here, but just a quick one, question from Jane. Um, how many customers or which customers should I be monitoring with Creditor Watch? Look, I really suggest that you monitor your whole, um, not just your active customers, but your your whole you know uh, database. Um, typically, you know people think, oh, I'll just monitor the ones I'm worried about. Well, I wouldn't be worried. I wouldn't be monitoring those because you've already got an eye on them. You know that you've already got concerns. It's the ones that you have no idea about, the ones that you think are you know trading well and probably have bigger credit limits and, and more flexible credit terms, um, I'd be I'd be more prioritizing those. Um, but really, you want to be monitoring absolutely everyone because you just never know when someone might fall over and what sort of effect that's going to have on your business. Um, another question here, Michael is asking, what should I do with customers at, under administration? excuse me, under administration, um, you need to be contacting the administrator immediately. Um, the insolvency notice will provide that. Get in contact with the administrator, um, provide your proof of debt in the form of you know, statements, uh, invoices, any, any email communication that you've had with that particular debtor. I think that probably wraps us up. I will leave this open um, for the time being. So if you do have any more questions, please feel free to ask away and our staff um, will monitor will monitor those for the next sort of five minutes or so. Um, if we don't answer your question, we will get back to you in the next 24 hours. I promise you that. Um, so thanks everyone for, for joining us today. I hope you all got something out of it and I look forward to hosting you at our next webinar in a couple of weeks. Thanks very much.